Right, welcome back guys. Anyone that's new to the channel, welcome. Right, uh, if you've just watched the birdhouse one that I just uploaded, now we're gonna go for the oh, Christmas Christmas ornaments, okay? So we're gonna do one of these. Now, as like I said, nothing new, been done by loads of people. Um, Axe means to put one up the other day. Uh, if you haven't seen it, if you've seen it, then you know this bit. If you haven't seen it, then, well, watch and you'll see. Right, I've drilled a hole through here. That's a 10 mil hole that goes right through. Um, I drill it on the lathe, and if you do it from both sides, then your hole's going to be centred up properly. Okay, so now the next thing... Oh, let me grab one of these. The next thing is to do these holes, okay, which are the... Uh, 32 mil I'm doing them. Oh, look, these blocks are 50 mil by 50 mil square. Just 50 mil by 50 mil by 50 mil by 50 mil <laughs> square <laughs> blocks. <laughs> all right. Well, it's four sides, all four sides are 50 mil. <laughs> I know what I mean. <laughs> Stop laughing. Right, okay. So, bring that up there, and we're just going to drill for it. As I said, do the same drill. Well, you can only drill so far, because if not, I'll hit the chuck on the other side. So, right, slow this down. So, I normally go for around about 900. Yeah. 900 RPM. Right, so I'm just going to go in. Nice sharp drill bit. Again, these are very easy to sharpen. This is one of the sawtooth bits. Well, I'm coming to where the 10mm hole is. I'm going to go just to the other side of that. That's it. Right, pop that out. Stop, turn it round. So that's that one done. Now we'll turn it around and uh, we want to go through that side. Now, whatever jaws you use, I mean, you know, you want to be able to grip grip a two inch piece of wood. I mean, these are these are a record power ones, so they're really good actually. And they have, where the uh, screws go, they have these little holes, so your, your square blocks fit in there perfectly, fits really well. Really pleased with these. Nice jaws, and a lot cheaper than the others, aren't they, please? 35 quid for those jaws. And they fit on all the record power laves, uh, chucks. And the charmwood chucks, and the sorby chuck, and the other chucks. The techno chucks, the Nova ones, I fit on them. Which is what I like about that, sort of, I like the record power ones, because, uh, they don't only take their own jaws, they take all the other jaws. So you're not you're not limited. You know, you get such a wide selection. And they're good chucks, I've had them for years. These chucks I've been using for a long time. When they were the, the G3 was the record power one and not the Nova. So from very early on, I've used the uh, record power jaws. Right, okay, that's that. So that's that drilling bit done, and that way you get a, so you get that nice, nice finish, all, all nice and smooth, all done, all centered as well. Right, so now then, we're gonna take the drill bit out, get rid of all this stuff. Don't need any of this now. Right, just Bring it back. Just gonna take this out. There we go. All right, 
gonna take this chuck off because I don't need this chuck. Right, because when you're turning these, now I've got uh, I've got my collet chuck and I make a couple of these up. I do these on my metal lathe. I do them so they're for friction drives. They fit into my collet chuck and this is a, a 10 mil one that I have because you want to be able to, you want to be able to mount this between these holes. So I want that to fit on there like that and I'll just put a drive center up there. You want to have room to get around. Now you can make a, a wooden one for these. You could make it out of wood and put it on there or you can get uh, these sort of, your drive centers um, and make them. I've got one there, it goes in as well. Um, that again, I just turned that down myself on my metal lathe, but you can, you can buy these, uh, the pen ones. Oh, is it the light, the light pull, the light pull ones, they're the ones that uh, do it. And for that, I'm just gonna use a live center on this side. And that's it, um, not too tight because you don't, you just want it so it's not gonna be slipping, that's all. If it starts to slip, you just give it a little turn and tighten it up. Right, okay, so we're gonna get in there. Okay, right, let's start to turn this. Um, turn my speed back up, that's it. I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna turn this one with the carbide because that's obviously what it's all about for me. But it's nice. You know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You can you can do both, it's nice to do both. But if you wanna just turn with carbide, nothing wrong with that. You know, nothing wrong at all. Is that all right, is that slanted? Yeah, it slips a little bit. Sorry, I just hold it there. Come here. Yeah. Hang on, I'm just gonna tighten this camera up. That's it, there we go. You okay there? Yeah, I mean, if you just want to use carbide, then there's nothing wrong with that. Just use your carbides. If you want to just use traditional, fine, do that. My my personal choice, I would always say to everyone, is use both. Get the best, best of both worlds. You know, use them together. And like I say, soon you'll start to learn that you can uh, that you can use them the same way. I'm signing off with a nine mil round here. Yeah? Okay, I'm just going to gently bring this round. That's good because when you're turning this, you've got a shadow, you can see through, you can see the size of the hole, so you know how far down you can, uh, you can go. So basically follow that shape. Remember, keep the cut rolled over all the time. You don't want to cut, if you're coming in here like this, it's going to do it and you're going to remove the wood very quick. Actually, my tool rest is too hard, but it's still up for the skew, aren't I? What a donut. Oh well, never mind. Right, yeah, so if you want to come in and scrape, you can, like this. And, see, I mean, you'll remove wood quick, but when you when you do that, when you're coming in like this, oh, a little fraction there. Tighten that up, that's it, a little fraction, so you'll get that sort of thing as well. But, now, if I come in like this, let me show you. Right, I'm just using the tool flat, okay, there. Take this off. Right, that's just with the tool flat. And what I'll get is, it's us, but look, I'm getting tear out. I've got tear out here, okay? Bit of tear on here, it's a bit rough there. I, I can feel, feel how rough it is. And a lot of people think that's a good finish. And yeah, it's a good, it's good enough finish. That you could start off with, if you started off with a 120 grit paper, um, and work your way up yeah that'd be fine and and you'll get away with it and it'd be all right but for me it's not the way to use them 
because you, that is just scraping. And it's um, one one would turn it off. Or I always always like to watch is um, Jimmy Clues. I think it's fantastic, and he had it right off when he turned around and said the the difference between scraping and cutting is you could walk out in that street, you could get anyone walking past, come in here, mate, hold that, hold that like that, and just go round there like that, and they do it. But you get someone to come in and you say, right, angle that over, ride that bevel and get a nice smooth cut. That's the difference. So, you don't want to be just anyone walking down the street, do you? So, you know, learn, just learn how to roll them over and get a nice cut. You don't want to just be scraping all the time. Save yourself a lot of sand in and everything. So if you come round, roll it over. Round like there. Come this side. Again, cut it up, rolled over. Working off the tip. Nice and smooth. I see I've got a lot, a long way to go down here yet. Yeah. If you can hear that crackling sound all the time, in these back, I've got the wood burner on. It's nice and warm in here. Being down with rain outside. <clears throat> Alright, so slowly coming round. What I'm doing, I'm just following the shadow. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but there's that shadow there you can see. It's got to be a dead ball shape, but it's nice to get it ball shape if you can. I'm going to just come round this side with a cutter. Get it rolled over. Cut it there. Get it rolled over. 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 Get I'm going to do the same here. That was a little bit harder to get round on. So I've got the drive centre there. The live centre, I mean. What I can do there is I can come in with my detail chisel. Come in with my detail chisel. Just bring it round like that. There you go. Shear cut that as I come round there, look. And when I'm shear cutting that, don't come round here because that's just scraping it. If you're shear cutting it, you're going to have to work from there and come up and work up. Okay, and that's that shear cut. And don't put your fingers on that bit till it <laughs> Right, let's have a look at what we've got. See if I'm right. It's quite a nice ball shape. There we go. You get these little bits here, but they're just brushing off, see? 
Right, I didn't stain this one actually, but it don't matter because I'm going to spray some of them, so that's all right, that's not too bad that. Right, let's spin it up and just uh, give it a very, very light sand in. I'll go from underneath to be better. Right. right now I'm not doing I'm not putting any finish on that because as I said I'm gonna be um I'm gonna be painting these so right pop that out of there pop that off of there and there we go right let me just uh grab a couple of finials let's just see Yeah, that one and that one right so there you go so where are you so there you go we pop a finial in they need glue in i glue that one in glue that and then i'll put something inside and glue something inside i might put like a, a little marble or something in there this one do like a little crystal and there you go okay quite easy to make up they look they look more complicated than they are they're they're, they're very easy so now what we do we're we'll take another one pop another one on here all right Pop another one on there. Right, now this one. This one, we'll turn with our spindle gouge. Just so it's something different. Right, okay. You all right? Okay. Hold again, just bring it down. Angles right down, I push my spindle gouge, my pre spindle gouge. Remember the wood's square at the moment, so... So I'm actually going to go and come in with old gouge just to... Take that down a little bit. My handle's dropped right down. I'm on the side of the cutter to there. Yep. Okay. Doing a nice clean cut. Probably rounds now, no, not quite. Okay, nice and gentle.
Bring my tool rest in. So again, just my nice gentle cuts because you don't want it all splintered out. You want a nice finish. You don't want to have a lot of sanding to do. I'm a bit high for this. Let me just turn it down a little bit. There we go. Done. For some reason we've got a bit of screeching on this side. Yeah, a bit noisy that side. Blend these two together now. I'm not going to do it with the spindle gouge, I'm going to get that out of the for this. I'm not going to allow it with the spindle gouge. There's a bit of vibration on it for some reason. There we go. Blend those two together and round on this side here and we get it right. There we go. Right there, I've got that little bump in the middle there, you can just see it. Yeah, a bit more flashing about really. Right, that's nice. I just need to go back into the spindle gouge just to come Right, let's stand back. I don't even make you feel Christmassy, eh? Oh, now look, that's why I was getting all that vibration. Could have done with a little bit tighter, that's right, there you go, see? So if you're getting that vibration, chances are your towel stock's not tight enough. Now, obviously I did that, I knew it was that. I, I did that deliberately. I think I fell for that one. Worth <laughs> <No. laughs> well, a try. Once while I was getting the vibration there, down that end. Right, okay. That's why I've got that little little ridge there, that little mark, but it's gone there. No ridge there, no more. Right, there you go, that's another one. Let's, uh, let's stop and have a look, see what it looks like. Yeah, that's all right.
Right, so it's another one. Put that off. Pop that off of there. Just grab a couple of fingers for that one. And then we'll try to put Duke. 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 Well, it's a little bit loose on that, but never mind. They're going to glue in, so they'll be all right once they're glued. There you go. And that will be like that. Okay. All right, so I'll get some more of these made up and get some gluing done. All right, so there you go, guys. That was just a quick... Oh, there you go, that was just a quick one to do, and like I say, you can um, make these, just make out of uh, wood if you want, I mean, I've got a, a bit over there, I suppose I could always just quickly show you if you wanted to, if, if anyone wants to actually, no, I've got a piece here, look, if I pop this on, just for the fact that if you haven't got um, a collet chuck, uh, or you haven't got the, the drive centers, then it doesn't matter, you can make one out of wood. So we'll pop that in there. I haven't got a tenon on it or nothing, I've just this just piece of wood I'm going to mount in there. That's all right, that's, that's good enough for what we're going to do. Right, so if you haven't got your um, friction drives or anything, just make one, quickly out of wood. Right, so we know we want 10 mil. So what I'm gonna do, because you're trying to say you've got your carbide, so just use your carbide chisel. calipers and get your 10 mil right, I'm going to use this to get my 10 mil so I haven't got me drilled it here and I know this is I know this fits right so where are you going yeah I'm going back in the you make your mind up where you're going oh, no. right there we go so 10 mil right so we just bring this down to our 10 mil Nice and slow, don't be in a rush. What you want, you want a, a tight fit in 10 mil. Right, there you go, look at that, tight fit in 10 mil. And then, bring this bit down. To about 12 mil. Now you ain't got to measure it, just do it by eye, you just want it a couple of mil bigger. And you won't have to go back quite a way. Get all nice and smooth. Put a tiny little chamfer just on that end there. Makes it easier to get in. All right. We'll bring that like that. Right. Then, what's the second one? 12 round, just to chamfer this round. Now, The reason I'd say do that is it makes it a bit nicer, a bit kinder on your hand if your hand comes around there when you're coming around with your tools. You don't want, don't want edges sticking out. 
you don't want the edges sticking out and then all we do grab another one of these that should be 10 mil nice tight 10 mil right it, it will wear with time as you go so don't worry if you want a nice tight fitting one because what you don't want to be having to do is is put too much pressure on you want enough pressure otherwise what will happen if you don't put enough pressure on it it'll vibrate when you're turning it <laughs> shut up you <laughs> right but you don't want to put too much pressure on because when you turn it thin you know you don't want to dab it but there you go so and the reason you want this stem here because you want enough room to come around on that back bit there okay you want enough room to come around there Remember, work on your tip. Let it tool rest in a little bit. Work off the tip, tip of the tool. I can see I've got a long way to go. As you can see, I work, I'm above centre when I'm doing all this. A lot of time when you're doing your shear cutting, you need to be above centre. But now, see another thing, if you're going to you're gonna come out in with your bulk out, if you're going to come in with your bulk out to do a shear cut, right, really, you don't want to see we're on center here and you don't really want to be what you want to really do is drop the tool rest down a bit okay so now i'm way below center but when i come here now i can get a good shirt up now if you're on center you'll end up you'll you'll change your angle to get your cut and what will happen is you'll be scraping you won't be shear cutting you want you want to be down here so really you want to put the tool rest down a bit. And then you can get a nice shear cut, see? You come off the side of the tool. You won't get no catching. And you get a nice get a nice shear cut. You get a nice cut on it. So if, if, so if, you, if you're on center, which is around here, let me just check. Yeah, see if I'm on center and I come up, I'm I'm coming too high to get, look, I'm not, I can't really, I can get it, but it's not, it's not right. I can't get the proper cut. So what you'll end up doing is you'll either duck the tool over a bit and then you're not, you're not shear cutting, you're not got your bevel or you'll change the angle like that and then you're going to scrape it if you're going to shear cut it you've got to keep your tool this way right down because remember you're using that that edge you're using this edge here you want the wood coming down on it okay the minute you turn around here that you're not shear cutting you're scraping you've got to come here so you can get a cut and then you can be so delicate with it
and we'll just slice those fibres, okay? Right, it's all finished for today. Let's get back to just doing this. But that's just my opinion, I don't teach. I can see the shadow now. Yeah. 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 We're going to blend that here, blend that little circuit bit there, a little bump there, a little bump, because I've turned the crank on. That's it, saw it go then. Oh, a little, little lumpy bit there. Done. See now people would look at that and think well you're cutting up hill, but I'm not, I'm cutting down hill. You think about it, which way are the fibers supported? They're supported on this side, so if I come in here, the fibres are supported. It looks like I'm cutting up the hill because I'm going up, but I'm not, I'm going down. Now if I go this way, I'm cutting up hill. And how does that work out? This there. Nice and gentle, oh, we don't want to chip out. There we are. Come along there. There we are, right, that's that. Right, now let's do a little bit of sanding. Just a little bit, I don't like a lot of sanding. You know me, I'm, a, I'm not a fan of the, all this sandpaper in. into all the sandpaper. I thought I was conned when I was sold this. The bloke told me that was a map of our local beach. Only when I went down there and found out the beach was all mud that I realised he was lying. <laughs> right, there we go, let's have a look at that one. <laughs> there we go. A few fluff fluff bits just around the edge, but there we go guys, look at that, nice and round. Okay. Right, and that's done just on a little a little wooden. The wooden chuck, so just pop it off. And as you as you do a cut, see it it wear and it get it get smaller. So you turn it round and it'll be. So when you put your next one on, it'll be a little bit looser and it'll, it'll slowly wear in. Right, but there you go. Yeah. So when I was saying cutting 
See, I'm not cutting uphill. So if you put it that way, I'm going downhill. Put that that way, I'm going downhill. So it, yeah. But, but it don't matter as to which way you cut, as long as you get a nice finish. So as long as you get a nice finish, then that's all that matters. And these are being painted, so I'm not putting out, I'm not going 400 grits and all that. I'm going to stain these. And like I said, they're hanging outside on a tree. They're not, they're not going to be indoor stuff. They're not all glossy, pretty things. They're just going outside. I'm going to put like, um, I'm going to go and buy some marble. Oh, well, that's a thing, isn't it? Marbles. Well, I ain't seen marbles for ages. No, pound yeah, land and I have to go to pound land or something. If I get a bag of marbles and I'm just going to glue a little marble inside. So they twinkle as the lights are on around them and they twinkle and they'd be nice. And then as I say, the finials just pop in. I've got different ones, different ones for all the different different trees. So they're gluing like that. And there you go. Okay. And that will hang like that. And if you haven't got your friction chuck, there you go. You can like uh if you haven't got a a doobry, a doobry, doobry collet chuck. That's the collet word. Chuck, yeah. If you haven't got a collet chuck or any of these bits, <laughs> um, then your next step is to get uh, a light pull drive. You can get one of those. And if you ain't got that, then quite simply, scrap bit of wood costs you nothing and make one. Okay, it's quite nice actually because if you do go round and you, you get a catch or something or you hit this with your chisel, it's only wood, you're not going to damage it, not going to damage the tools. And as I say, if you make that, you can make it longer if you want, come out here so you're well away from your chuck, makes it easier when you're coming round there and you've got to get your hands in. That's why I took that down to that because if you've got to come round and get your hands in here, you don't want you don't want something sticking out there that's going to catch your, catch your knuckles or something like that, it hurts. I've done it plenty of time. Right, that's that, guys. Next one, right, I want to cut that short because then they upload quicker. Next one will be on Halloween. I think I'm doing a vase. A vase. A thing with a hole in the middle. And hollow it. There you go. Right. Thank you for joining me, guys. And I'll catch you on the next one. Toodle pip. Bye, guys.